Welcome to Kingdom News on God's Own TV. On the news today, how I converted from Islam to Christianity, Evangelist Gloria Bamiloye reveals. Moment from Prophet Racine and Evangelist Ruth Wedding. About two season three release date announced. Evangelist Mike Bamiloye wants on indecent dressing. Fans of the popular gospel series Abatoa are in for a treat as the president of Mount Zion Faith Ministries. Evangelist Mike Bamiloye has announced the premiere date of the third season of the web series. He revealed that the third season of Abatoa will premiere during the coming 2022 Drama Minister's Power Night. The event will be holding at Jogo Center, Ring Road, Challenge, Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital, by 7 p.m. This announcement was accompanied by a flyer via the official Facebook page of Evangelist Mike Bamiloye. The third season announcement was also made by Damilola Mike Bamiloye on his own page. Recall that the lead character and director of the movie, Damlola Mike Pamiloye, had announced they had completed the shooting of this movie since January 2022. Although it is not yet clear when the series will be made available for the online audience, this announcement shows the series should be on YouTube by March or April 2022. We promise to bring you more updates as events unfold in the coming days. Who else is excited to see how the relationship between Martins and Benro will pan out in Season 3? Let us know your expectations in the comment section below. Mm, what do you mean? Is the young man now beginning to behave himself? Has he stopped his Bugan younger? Eh? While well, many know Evangelist Gloria Bamiloye, the wife of Mount Zion Faith Ministries founder, to be a woman of faith, not many knew she used to be a Muslim girl who came from a Muslim family. But in an interview with Yemisi Adeniro, Evangelist Gloria Bamiloye revealed that she was born into a Muslim family, making her a Muslim. Speaking further, she revealed how her journey into the Christian faith began. According to Evangelist Gloria Bamiloye, her elder brother was the first to become a Christian in her family and his conversion greatly influenced the rest of her siblings. She said, I grew up to know Jesus though I came from a Muslim family. My elder brother got born again along the line and this influenced all of us. I was actually in the primary school when I got introduced to Christ all along. However, I admired people who were in the Lord, their love for God, their desire to serve Him, their books and the way God used them to influence other people's lives always intrigued me. So I desired to be like them. Though I never knew how and I never knew it was going to be true drama. She also revealed that she had a desire to be a pastor in order to preach the gospel. This she started doing as a member of a church choir. She would later be a part of the drama group on campus after seeing the passion and dedication of the members of the group. Prophet Rasin Buso got married to Evangelist Ruth on Valentine's Day, 14th February, in a private ceremony. The wedding blessing took place in the United Kingdom, the home country of Evangelist Ruth. 
Prophet Rasin, a Senegalese, was one of the famous five wise men that worked closely with the late Squan founder, Prophet T.B. Joshua. His wife, Ruth, also trained as evangelist in Squan. The two ministers announced their engagement last month and are now married. Yeah, a beautiful moment from the wedding ceremony. No. You don't need help. What you need is grace. Legendary filmmaker and the end of Christian drama, evangelist Mike Bamiloe has cautioned ladies on wearing short skirts and tight fitting gowns to church. Evangelist Bamiloe gave this warning in the post on his verified social media account. According to the legend, right in the church, some sisters carry their body and catwalk around as if in a fashion parade. He complained that the skirts of ladies are getting shorter and shorter and their blouses are getting more tight fitting and the cleavages are dropping down lower and lower, adding that a child of God who desires to please a maker would not follow such trend that could make others fall into sin. In another post, he shared his experience when he was invited as a guest minister at a church. According to him, a lady who was wearing a short skirt that stopped at the tie with a six inches high heels was among the ushers going round to take offering. He lamented on the effect such attire we have on brothers who are still trying to find their footings in the Lord. He said, right in the church, some sisters carry their body and catwalk around as if in a fashion parade. The skirts of ladies are getting shorter and shorter and their blouses are becoming more tight fitting and the cleavages are dropping down lower and lower. But a child of God who desires to please a maker would not flow in this river which is heading towards a deep and deadly waterfall. You would choose to dress and live to please the master, your maker, not to please the world and please yourself. Using the words of Jesus Christ, he advised Christian sisters to be careful not to make anyone sin. In his own words, Jesus Christ said everyone should be careful never to make anyone fall or else it is better for such person to be thrown in the sea with a stone hung around his neck. Sisters, daughters of Zion, do you dress to please the Lord or you dress to please yourselves? Do you care how sensual and tempting your dress up looks on campus, street, and church? Okay, so that was the word of advice and admonishment from evangelist Mike Bamiloye. And need I say that it is important that we watch how we dress the church, and it is also important that we watch how we dress even to work, to market, to other places because we can make people to fall into sin in the church at the same time we can make them to sin at work we can also make them to sin even at the market at the mall any place so wherever we are as ladies it is important that we dress in such a way that we glorify god in heaven pillar gospel drama minister omola ayola has shared words of advice on the need to have a reliable spiritual father 
as she showered praises on evangelist Mike Bamiloye, who is described as our own spiritual father. According to the versatile actress, there is a need to be sure the person considered a spiritual father knows the right part and will never cease to chastise when necessary. She added that it is important that the spiritual father cares about the growth and well-being of his child. To demonstrate this, Omola Ayola shared a lovely photo depicting the Lini as herself and her husband, Olubenga Ayola, rest on the shoulder of the founder of Mount Zion Faith Ministries, Evangelist Mike Bamiloye. She further thanked Evangelist Mike Bamiloye for being a true father to them. In her own words, she said, When you have a father to lean on, you will always find your path. Who is your father? Don't be a fatherless child. But in choosing a father, don't choose who would never tell you the truth. Don't choose those who would never talk sense into you. Don't choose those who would encourage you to disrespect others. Leader of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Kuan, Pastor Evelyn Joshua, has revealed how Christians can break the power of sin over their lives. Pastor Evelyn made the revelation during a sermon at the Skoan Sunday service on the 13th of February. Dressed in a wine-colored flowing gown and a signature head tie, the Skoan leader titled a sermon a deliberate sinner. Reading from the book of Psalm 51, she noted that the psalmist acknowledged his error and failure before God, calling on our listeners to do the same. Pastor Evelyn Joshua said, If you make excuses for your sin, your sins will not be excused. The proof text for the message is John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 15. Quoting prophet T.B. Joshua, Pastor Evelyn said that a deliberate sinner is he who knows sin and does it. Citing the book of Galatians chapter 5 from 19 to 21, she said that if not for trouble, pain and hardship, man by his wicked nature will not seek the face of God. Speaking on how to break the power of sin, she said, we don't have the physical strength to contend with Satan and his agent. We must look to heaven, to Christ, and to lay our soul under his influence and operations. Our God is faithful. Our God is good. We just have to give our life to him in all we do. She added that the best antidote against the poison of sin is to walk in the spirit. Pastor Evelyn said, sin is a poison to your soul. It causes poverty and sickness. But when it is pardoned, you will be healed. She went on to say that a deliberate sinner must have a change of heart. It is very difficult to obey God at first because it involves a turning point from our old usual ways of life. The psalmist says in Psalm 66 verse 18 that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Concluding a sermon, Pastor Evelyn Joshua asked, What does it mean to have sin in you? And she answered, It is when you have some level of respect for sin. Okay, so that was the message from Pastor Evelyn Joshua, the leader of Skoan. What do you think about this message and how do you think that believers, Christians, can overcome the power of sin in their life? Let me know in the comment section below till I come your way again. This is God's own TV. Continue to keep safe. Bye.